guys do hope you're all doing very well welcome to this review in this video i'm going to be showing you guys a fragrance that i've loved and respected for a very long time it's from a house which i massively appreciate and admire the house is jacques bogart and as you guys know i've actually reviewed quite a few bogart fragrances on my channel although i don't think i've talked about this one i might have talked about it but I'm not sure. Uh, the fragrance I'm talking about, of course, is Bogart. And, uh, or simply known as Bogart's signature. And as you guys can see, I haven't hardly worn this fragrance at all. Hardly wore it. It's a very inexpensive, classic fragrance that you can find online for less than £15. It's one of those very cheap, inexpensive fragrances, but the smell doesn't smell cheap. The bottle design it's not amazing, don't get me wrong, but it is a very unique bottle design, nevertheless. Uh, in fact, the company Jacques Bogart actually released another fragrance identical to this bottle called De Vries, but you cannot find that fragrance anymore. In fact, it's discontinued. It's pr pretty much a relic now. So, yeah, I mean, I do like the bottle design, though. I think it's nifty. I think it's got a lot of suave and sophistication to it. And the atomizer looks like this. So, yeah, we do get a very cheaply made atomizer. It would have been nice if it had this cover on the top, but it doesn't. So let's get it sprayed on some card. So as this is drying down, I'm going to tell you guys just a little bit more about this. So this was released in 1975. So this fragrance was released in 1975, literally the heart of the 1970s. Perfumers for this are Lucien Ferrero and Maurice Marin. Two perfumers who I've never, never actually heard of, uh, so I don't know what else they've made. So there's definitely a woodiness to the fragrance, smokiness, mossy, and I would say very leathery as well. Although the leather isn't like a modern leather, it's your quintessential 80s style leather. Has that ruggedness to it, you know? But that might just be because of the fact that there's a strong woody accord here and the oak moss. It's just so good. So this opens up herbal, but it's done in a very dark way and I'm getting slight citrus. So there's, there's some unique notes in here. There's a yellow mandarin note, lemon blossom and orange. There's some spicy elements in here as well. Nutmeg, clove, but the herbal notes are still here as well. So there's juniper along with the rosemary in the top. There's a bit of a lavender, it's not too strong. I've talked about lavender in a lot of fragrances that I've recently reviewed, but that's only because it's a very popular note. In this, it's a little bit toned down with a very smoky base. So there's oak moss, leather, and birch. And the smokiness is of course coming from the birch and it gives it this deep forest type of oak moss with the leather making it a bit more classy. It gives it this classy edge in the dry down. I feel like if there was no leather, it would just be your quintessential generic sort of 80s man's fragrance. But the leather and the base, especially in this, makes it smell very special. I remember the first time smelling this and it actually reminded me a lot, and I mean a lot, of Poor Louis by Oscar de la Renta. It definitely reminds me of this. Poor Louis is just a bit smoother, I think. Yeah, Poor Louis has a bit more of a, it has a bit of a softer, a bit of a smoother vibe to it. Whereas Bogart is just straight up manly. It's a very manly scent, this. Definitely more manly than Bogart's one-man show, but definitely not manlier than Furio. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a nice fragrance, this, guys. Very nice fragrance, even though it's it's got its macho vibes going on, it's definitely got a clean edge to it. I, I'm even getting a little bit of Santos Cartier vibes with this very slightly, although this has a bit more of a citrus going on. There, yeah, it's it's really good stuff, this guy. So if you're looking for a very like uber masculine fragrance, which isn't Aramis or Kuros, and you're looking for something that's like way less in price, 
this is brilliant. And I feel like if you're one of those people who's into niche fragrances, I don't even think you will dislike this because niche companies aren't even making fragrances like this. You know, this is a fragrance in its own time. You know, 1975, the 70s in general was a great time for fragrance, as much as the 80s were as well. But the 70s, I feel, really towards the end of the 60s, fragrances started to, to really get interesting and with the use of notes and the, the way that they were structured. This is your quintessential, classy, gentleman's fragrance. Although it isn't like your typical classic eau de cologne type of smell, this has a lot more going on. It's, it's overall a very dark fragrance. So it's elegant, but it's dark. So yeah, very much that. Yeah, really nice stuff. So let's talk about the performance and the longevity. In terms of its longevity, this is actually quite good. I get easy to six to seven hours with the mossiness lasting into the 10th hour. So it's one of those oak mosses which really dries down and really performs in the base. Yeah, I love it. So yeah. That's it with this video. Um, there's not really much else to talk about, but if you guys are curious about the old schools, check out Bogart, simply known as Bogart's signature. I'll see you all in the next video. Keep smelling good and bye for now. Would you guys like a smell? Good enough.